we've already set up our file structure, set up our preferences and imported our pictures, and now we're going to be learning how to convert them to black and white and export them. The assignment is located here on the server. Let's double click to open it. So um, the assignment is to convert a color photograph to black and white using the black and white panel. Um, this says to click on the word grayscale, but I'm going to show you uh, a little bit of a different way to do it. Um, and then if you could name it, instead of naming it this, call it grayscale lab underscore your name, because we're moving it ahead a little bit. So. Um, this isn't all that helpful, I'm afraid. And then you're going to take a screen grab, just like the student sample, and put it on the server. So call it, call it j this, lab underscore BW, and then your name, okay? We need to rewrite that black and white conversion lab. So if I double click on this to show you an example, this is what you're turning in. You're turning in a screen grab of your in the before and after view, which is down here, the YY view, before and after, in the develop module. And I have a view of my image before and after. I have the histogram showing, and I have my black and white conversion showing. OK, so that's what you're going to turn in. Remember that the keyboard shortcut to make a screen grab is Command-Shift. Add the number 4 to get a crosshair. Click and drag across the screen. It shows up on your desktop. You'll go ahead and name that by clicking once lab underscore BW my name. And then add that into the Dropbox. Oops, should be in the Dropbox, OK? And you can't see the results of the Dropbox, but I will go ahead and leave it projected so you can double check to make sure that it made it. Um, is this somebody that's in this class? OK, good. I just want to make sure I get it into the right section there. All right. So we're going to go ahead and open up our Lightroom catalog. To open up your Lightroom catalog, I recommend that you, instead of launching Lightroom, to get it to open to the correct catalog that you open from your file structure here. Lightroom catalog, your name. And the Lightroom catalog is the .lrcat folder that just disappeared for some reason. There we go. Double click on it. We'll launch Lightroom. That's how you ensure that you open the correct catalog. You can, I want you to work with a color image and convert that to black and white. So choose something that's already in color. It can be one of my sample images um, if you don't have anything that's in color, or it can be one of your pictures from the scavenger hunt. I don't care. OK? Are you with us, Reese? So you're going to choose an image that in color. Double click on it to make it large. And then we're going to migrate directly over to the library module. We will be spending time in the future in the library module, but uh, we're going to migrate over, excuse me, to the develop module, which is up here on the upper right hand side. Uh, it takes a minute, but if you click on that, it should be activated and move over to the develop module. Here we go. Uh, in the develop module, you see a histogram. We're going to be working with the histogram, the basic panel, and the black and white panel here. Whenever you convert an image to black and white, you want to, before you work with the histogram and the basic panel, you want to work with the black and white panel. We're going to click on black and white, and you can see the image is automatically converted to black and white through a series of presets. These, these represent color channel luminosity. So for example, this was originally a red car, and I'll show you a before and after view. And um, Lightroom went ahead and interpreted it for me, but you can work with this interpretation by changing a particular color's luminosity. Luminosity is how light or how dark a particular color is. So this can be a lot of fun. It can be especially fun 
when you're dealing with skies. So for example, if I wanted to make the sky really dark and menacing, I could do that here. Notice when I change the luminosity of a particular color, it also affects the image's histogram, which is why you want to do the black and white conversion first. I got a little heavy handed down here with making this red really dark. You want to zoom in and make sure that you don't see any unwanted noise or artifacting when you're doing this conversion. For example, in the sky here, I made it pretty dark blue, but you can see that there's some noise starting to show through and some haloing around this um, particular tree that looks artificial and not very nice. So I'm going to back off until I see it disappear. Okay? The other thing that can be fun in this black and white slider is to obviously lighten or brighten particular colors. So here we have kind of an infrared look. And if you don't know what infrared is, it's a particular film that's used that makes greens really, really white. Um, and so you can get multiple effects. And what I can do over here is I can make a snapshot which, which saves a history state. Here is every single move that I've made on this image so far. I can go back in time and look at all of them. Because Lightroom is non-destructive, I can also reset the image back to the original, which is pretty cool. I'm going to undo that, though, edit undo, to get back to my interpretation here. So, you know, if you're not sure which one you like the best, you can save a snapshot of these history states. So I can click on the plus button and choose black and white one, hit create. And then I can go and make another version. And say black and white two, and hit create. And I can decide which one I like the best by going back and forth. This never is erased. This is saved with your catalog. It's image specific. So if I wanted to go and work on another image like this one, Notice that that snapshot went away because it's only attached to this or this particular image. Or the image I was working on. Where did it go? Not that one. Not that one. It's here somewhere. Here it is. It's black and white. I just didn't recognize it. So this down here is the film strip. You can drag this up and down to make it smaller and larger so that you can see it a little better. Okay? And I can see now that I have this marker here, or uh, I'm sorry, this marker right here, the plus minus, which indicates that I have a development adjustment on it of black and white. So after you do your black and white mix and you decide on the picture, this is my before and after shot, you decide on the mix that you want to turn in for the class, then it's time to check your histogram. By turning these little warning signs on, it tells you this area is pure black. See if I turn this on and off? This is your pure white area. Generally, with a histogram, so that we get beautiful prints that have a nice highlight and a nice shadow, we don't want any empty content over here in the white area. So if I roll over the histogram, you can see on the lower left, this is the white area. These are the highlight values, or I like to call them quarter tones. These, this is the exposure range, or mostly mid-tones. These are shadows, or three-quarter tones, and these are blacks. Generally, a nice print has a full range of tones. So pure blacks over here. And you can see that I'm clicking and dragging on the histogram. And when I click and drag right on the histogram, it affects the sliders in the basic panel. So I can click and drag. So the histogram reflects these sliders here. And I'm going to click and drag out this white area. And I'm going to bring the exposure back a little bit. Now, this looks really bright on the monitor, and it might be a little too bright. I might want to bring my um, exposure down a little bit, but bring my whites up like that. So you should have some whites here on the right. It shouldn't be totally flat. And I think I went too far with my shadows. I'm going to lighten those up a little bit just like that. 
So you should have a nice variation in the histogram to get a good print. Um, paying attention to what it looks like on the monitor is not always accurate because we're looking at a backlit image. When we translate to a printed image, it's reflective. So we want to have some pure blacks, which are indicated with the blue area and also the histogram here. Having pure blacks in some area without detail is not a bad thing. And we also want some nice bright highlights. And when highlights get too bright, they turn red. So that's overkill. But some nice bright highlights so that when we print the image, it has a good tonal range. So after you've gone ahead and played with the, your black and white adjustments, go back up to the histogram. You can work directly on the histogram or in the basic panel. Save different snapshots here as the different versions. Uh, that you might want to keep. I'll call this one black and white three histogram adjustments. Okay. Then after I'm done perfecting my adjustment on that image, I'm going to do a before and after shot. I want you to show me the histogram and the black and white adjustments here that you've made. And I'm going to take a screen grab, command shift four, Okay, name it and turn it into the Dropbox. Here it is. So I'm going to name it the same thing I named this, Lab Black and White, my name, and put it into the Dropbox. So we'll start with that and see uh, if you have any questions. We'll work for about 45 minutes um, and then we'll make sure and be back by 5 o'clock to do the next section. Um, if you finish one very quickly, work on some of your others uh, just to see what happens so you can turn in your very best one.